This is, it's not what you say. How to sell your message when it matters most. By Michael Parker. Pitch. Never venture, never win. Sun Tzu's The Art of War. First impressions count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds or less. That's how long you have to seize up people on the first meeting. It's, inst it's instinctive, governed by our gut reaction to body language, expression, and tone of voice. So consider how you come into the room, how you walk, shake hands, stand or sit down, smile, please, and keep your first and speak your first words. It is worth practicing your entrance one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Your fir first impressions are instantly formed and will influence all that follows. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. A winning start means a winning finish. You may have been given 20 or more minutes to make your case, deliver a speech, or argue for funds. This does not mean your audience will wait until you finish before making up their minds. They will often reach their conclusions well before you have reached the end. The vital first impression, in the first few seconds, raise, raises, raises expectations. The next few minutes should fulfill them. This is when you set, your, set out your, set, your stall. Introducing yourself, you start with your proposition. The 50 words to woo your lover. See page 38. And then present the agenda. You'll be following. Your three supporting points. See page 41. Doing this, doing this with clarity, authority, and zest will reassure and relax your audience. They will know where you are coming from and where you are going, and they will already be more than halfway to their decision. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. Mark Twain. To inspire others, you need to be inspired. The Oxford English Dictionary describes the outcomes before inspiring. To arouse a feeling, inspire confidence in others. To influence or compel, inspire to greater efforts. To animate or invigorate, inspire a specific action. You may not be Martin Luther King Jr., but you can still be in in inspiring. Provided you find something in your words that fires you. This can be a, str a strongly held belief, excitement at discovering a new solution or a story not told before. Whatever your fuel might be, grab hold of it and use it to inspire you. The rest will follow. One child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. Malala Yousafia. Once upon a time. Tell them a story. Nothing is as powerful in a pitch as a good story. Booker Price. Booker, Booker Prize winner, winning author A.S. Bryant said, Narration is as much a part of human nature as a breath and the circulation of blood. In this mesmerizing election victory speech in Chicago, President Obama told his story. This election had been many firsts and many stories that will be told for generations. But one that's on my mind tonight is about a woman who cast her ballot in Atlanta. She's a lot like the millions of others who stood in line to make their voice heard in this election except for one thing. Ann Nixon Cooper is 106 years old. She was born just a generation past slavery, a time when there were no cars on the roads or planes in the sky, when someone like her couldn't vote for two reasons, because she was a woman and because the color of her skin. He developed the story to bring alive the promise he was making to the American people. She was there for the buses in Montgomery, the houses in Birmingham, a bridge in Selma, and a preacher from Atlanta who told a, who told a people that we shall overcome. Yes, we can. From childhood, we have enjoyed and engaged with stories. We love them. We remember them. If you want to tap into emotion, Find a story that connects, illuminates, and engages. Learn from the Greeks. Over 2,000 years ago, Aristotle identified the three appeals or proofs that are the heart of pers persuasive speaking. Ethos is the appeal 
from the character of the speaker. Logos is the appeal based on rational argument. Pathos is the appeal to the emotions of the audience. Without thinking, we use all three in everyday com conversation when we are making a point. When faced with preparing something formal, we tend to focus on reason, logos, assuming that pesos will occur naturally, and often overlook ethos altogether. It's essential to consider how these three appeals work together to arrive at the first, at the most compelling and persuasive argument. The whole is greater than the sum of, the, of its parts. Aristotle. If your audience doesn't feel that you are one of them, speaking their language, and therefore worth hearing, they won't listen, no matter how brilliant you are. Establishing a bond, a rapport, between you and your audience in the opening minutes is essential. You can achieve this through your appearance, body language, and, not least, eye contact and handshake as you make your entrance. Then your introductory remarks, before you launch into your subject, should provide an insight into, shared, into a shared interest, a common ground. Your audience can then relax. You are on their side. The matter of your introduction should be int intimate rather than distant, closing the gap between you and your audience. You should lean forward and, if seated when standing, move toward them. Ach bin in Berlin. President Kennedy, 1963, West Berlin. Logos is at the heart of a well-written essay, but for the live audience, the way the information is received is quite different. Readers can reflect, ponder, pause, or go back to check for meaning at their own pace. The live audience has no such option. If they miss a step in your logic, they can't pause or replay. If, you, if you're live, you need greater simplicity clarity of expression, and a un unmistakable flow to your reasoning. There should be no lengthy, complicated paragraphs. Instead, there should be lots of common sense plus some examples. And maybe you can use a maximum to, a maximum to illustrate your thinking. In preparation, make sure your basic premise and support are unarguable. Then reinforce with the emotional ar arsenal. Don't raise your voice, improve your argument. Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Logos will set the scene for consideration, but it is in the emotion that will lead to action. And it's not just any old emotion you will or should have identified and shared a feeling with your audience as the focus of your appeal. This may be anger, outrage, or fear, optimism, excitement, or pride. Vivid, compelling language should be used to capture the audience emotionally with words and images that evoke the desired feelings. A story or anecdote that dramatizes your issue is often the most powerful way of swaying your audience and triggering their emotional response. Then, it's the passionate nature of your delivery, the way you say it, to rouse your audience let them feel your feelings. Thou canst not speak of thou don'ts not feel. William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. The longer you go on, the less impact. Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg's Address, the most famous speech in America, had 272 words and lasted three minutes. Things to consider. Everyone's attention span is declining. People are possibly social networking while you're talking. A TED Talk is 18 minutes long. Speed dating is 5 minutes long. Questions and answers. How important is a Q&A session to decision makers? It is all important in an interview, but can be just as important after a pitch. How much time should be given to the session? Where where you can where you have control never let the formal presentation eat into question time can you prepare for the unknown questions you can anticipate 80% of the subject area will my resume or advanced document have been read 
Perhaps in an average panel, less than 50% will have read it. Do I address my answer to the panel or the in, in, uh, individual questioner? Focus on the flatter, the questioner at the start and finish, but don't ignore the others. What is the secret to a good answer? Your manner and the way you answer give the essential clues to your personality and attitude. How much detail should I go in? Avoid the long answer. Judgment will be based more on your initial response. How should a team handle questions? The team leader fields and passes a question to a team member. Avoid multiple answering. Is it worth rehearsing as questions are not known? Yes, you are still on stage in performance mode. How can I finish strongly? Be ready with a brief thank you and on a positive note. The dreaded panel interview. Some do's and don'ts. Aspects of psychographic profiling which can measure personality traits may sometimes be used before mega pitches in jury selection or recruiters. Most interviewees, however, will only meet their audience for the first time on the day. And you're going in blind in terms of the personalities facing you, so you must rely on your instincts to handle three main responses. Nice, neutral, and nasty. The majority of interviewer, interviewers will be nice, interested in you, wanting you to do well. They put you at ease, and they listen. This makes your task easier. Engage with them, enjoy the, enjoy the encounter, take the risk, and go for it. But do not let the nice trap you, you into going off track and talking too much. Neutrals may be reluctant participants or may be attentive but prefer not to show it. Their resulting lack of interest, actual or apparent, is disconcerting. Don't overcompensate. Don't strive to get a reaction. Nasties want to be the center of attention and exert authority with tough questions. And some may be role-playing. Don't get defensive. And definitely avoid confrontation. Don't be rushed into a response. Do stay calm. Be concise, positive, and honest. Maintain your overall composure. A certain, not aggression, is key. Remember, give them something to remember you by. You gave a well-prepared speech by or a convincing case for, the sel for selection, or you were just being your charming best. But will you be remembered? A few days or weeks later, how will they remember you after the many more interviews interviews and presentations they see? If you are totally brilliant, if you are totally brilliant, then you may be remembered for everything you said. This is unlikely. Most of us have to settle for less. Make sure that, at the very least, something stays in their mind. In the mind. So take the memorable test. If you can't put a big check mark next to one of these, you will quickly be forgotten. A compelling story. A repeatable phrase, a piece of pure theater, an unlikely setting, an astounding vi visual, audience, participation, best of all, an idea. It's showtime. Lights, camera, action. Time to find the actor in you and bring a sense of theater to what you do. Think of the memorable performances of Winston Churchill on the radio, Martin Luther King at the Lincoln Memorial, or Steve Jobs introducing the iPhone. Your stage may not be on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, but whether your audience is solitarily dry, a dry interviewer or a boisterous wedding party you are performing, whether you like it or not, you are on stage. You need to find your own touch of theater. The words you have prepared must be turned into an experience. Imagining a state a staging and add pizzazz. Consider movement and, ge and gesture a dramatic entrance, a compelling story told with feeling, elements of surprise, props that add flavor or intrigue, an unexpected setting, and not, not least, tone of voice. Just as an actor takes time to get, in, get into a part, so should you. With rehearsal, you will become more natural on stage and more spontaneous creating an interesting, engaging experience. Drama is life with the dull bits cut out. Alfred Hitchcock